there was this much room behind the bed. So literally impossible for someone to be behind there, but I did it every night. And um, I had my pillows in a certain order and I would throw them over my head in a certain order. Um, and so I had a nightly ritual and, you know, I felt uncomfortable when my parents would be like, what are you doing? You don't have to do that. So, and they didn't really know how to address that sort of, it was an, anom an anomaly in, in my behavior. I, I was, for the most part, what you would consider a normal kid. And so, sure, I had some trouble being away from them. I didn't uh, do well in like preschool and going to kindergarten by myself for the first couple of days, but I always got used to it. So they assumed this was a passing phase. It didn't get in the way until I was 12, seventh grade. And I just, I mean, it could have been a combination of seventh grade is a time when physical changes start to occur as well as mental. And I was very uncomfortable. Um, not so much in my own skin, just like in the world. And I ne very much needed my parent to be next to me and to be with me and to tell me that everything was okay all the time. And if I didn't have that, um, I, I couldn't handle myself. It, it was not a fun process for anybody who was involved. My parents, it, it's, it was just, it was, it was a mess. It was a mess. I was out of school and we were all very confused. My therapists were confused. Nobody knew what was going on. I, was, I went from, you know, OCD was a pretty, it was just there, and now it's in front of you all the time. And, and so, why I'm here today and why I'm working with the Child Mind Institute is so that one, when these symptoms start to develop, they're, you know, they're acknowledged and then treated. If I can do anything to inform parents, inform kids about what OCD is, how it can be treated, and how it's it's not a, it's, it should be talked about um, then I'm happy um, what's helpful is having a face to uh, to, uh, to look at when when you think of you know where's the end where does this end because parents are talking to all different kinds of psychiatrists I've been therapists who are telling them that it's going to get better um, if you do this and you know how do I know that and, and you know where's the evidence and if I if I can put a face to what it's like on the other end of it all, then I'm happy to do so. And if I can talk about what my experience was like and how, pe and if people can bond to that and relate to that and say, I was in that absolute desperate situation and I, didn't think, I don't think there's a way out of this. And if they can see me, who luckily got out of it, then, then progress is made. I wanna say it gets better, but I was in that situation as well and when people told me that I got angry and upset with them because they didn't understand where I was and I think if, if I, I, would go, I would go to them and, and relate to them as best I could and say I was where you are now and this is, how I, this is how I got out of it. And I think what I would say about that is opening your mind to, to treatment and the possibility that it actually does get better because when you're in that situation it's so much easier and so much better to think that like to just wallow, to wallow at the bottom of your bottom of your hole, because you don't. I mean, it, it takes effort to get better, and you know you can say people don't understand me. You know, um, they're trying to cure me, and they don't. Know, they don't even know what what's going on in my mind. Um, and it's very easy to isolate yourself. But the way I got better was, you know, the Child Mind Institute. The Child Mind Institute we developed a team. It was my therapist, my parents, um, my entire family, and so you need everyone on board and you need, you need an open-mindedness because without it, nothing happens.